Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Jessel Norm Baltimore, and welcome to this latest edition of the Ratner Report. Now joining us is Michael Ratner. He's the President Emeritus of the Center for Constitutional Rights in New York, Chair of the European Center for Constitutional and Human Rights in Berlin. He's also a board member for the Real News Network. Thank you so much for joining us, Michael. Jessel Noor, it's good to be with you in the Real News again. So, Michael, what do you have for us this week? Well, this week is in large part encompassed by my work with WikiLeaks and what's going on with Revelation, Snowden, uh, coming up sentencing of Jeremy Hammond. Uh, two events that really coming together for me that I think are very important. Uh, one was, and we're recording this on November 7th, but yesterday there was an open and public letter, November 6th, uh, from a woman named Sarah Harrison, someone who perhaps most of the people listening to this uh, may not be aware of or don't know. Uh, Sarah Harrison is the WikiLeaks person who accompanied Edward Snowden from Hong Kong to Moscow. She's been with Ed Snowden for four months. Uh, she and WikiLeaks are the organization and person who deserve credit uh, for helping negotiate his asylum and helping him get a legal way out of Hong Kong uh, to Moscow and should be given a lot of credit for that. Uh, she's a hero. She introduced a very powerful letter yesterday that I want to talk about. And now after four months, uh, the letter has come out and she is now in Berlin. She is no longer with Edward Snowden in Moscow. Not that there was any break, uh, but that she did what she had to do. And now Edward Snowden uh, is doing, I presume, quite well in Moscow. Uh, the other related event is the upcoming sentence of Jeremy Hammond. Jeremy Hammond is like Sarah Harrison and WikiLeaks, uh, is a transparency activist, unlike Edward Snowden. Um, on November 15th of the next week, Jeremy Hammond will be sentenced in New York City uh, in a federal court for an act of civil disobedience, the hacking of Stratfor, a strategic intelligence company, uh, which has opened up the world of private intelligence spying. Uh, that's what Jeremy Hammond did. It was incredibly important. He's facing up to 10 years in prison. Uh, he pleaded guilty to one count of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. There's a major campaign now. Uh, hundreds of letters have been submitted on his behalf to try and get him time served, which is about 15 months in jail so far. Uh, both of these people, uh, Sarah Harrison and Jeremy Hammond, are heroes to me. And they have in common this. They have a deep belief in people knowing what their government and corporations are doing. Um, they have a deep belief in transparency and in truth and an understanding that if truth is withheld from us, the people have a right to take it. And Sarah wrote in this letter something that almost brought me to tears. It's so moving. What she said was, in these times of secrecy and abuse of power, there is only one solution, transparency. If our governments are so compromised, they will not tell us the truth, then we must step forward to grasp it. If our governments will not give us this information, then we must take it for ourselves. That's Sarah Harrison speaking. And likewise, Jeremy Hammond said, in explaining why he did what he did, hacking into the Stratford emails, and why he pleaded guilty to one count, but why he said he did what he did, I did work with Anonymous to hack Stratford, among other websites. Those others included military and police equipment suppliers, private intelligence and information security firms, and law enforcement agencies. I did this because I believe people have a right to know what governments and corporations are doing behind closed doors. I did what I believe is right. Both incredible heroes and believers in transparency and truth. Sarah Harrison is paying a price for her beliefs. She has gone to Berlin because she has been advised by her lawyers that it is unsafe for her to return to the United Kingdom, her home. Why is it unsafe? Because in the United Kingdom, national security journalism is treated as terrorism. We know this after what happened with David Miranda, the partner of Glenn Greenwald, who was held at the airport and questioned under the terrorism law. And there's currently an investigation going on in the UK around what happened with David Miranda under the terrorism 
laws. That terror, terrorism investigation has been opened. Sarah Harrison, like others, has felt the wrath of the United States and the UK. She's taken refuge in Berlin, where unfortunately or sadly, uh, Laura Poitras has also had to take uh, an, eg an exile. She's the person who cooperated with Glenn Greenwald in both writing articles based on the Snowden revelations, as well as doing a video, and another activist with, with Tor, a person named Jacob Applebaum. They, too, are in Berlin. So, Harris, so, Harris, so Sarah Harrison is paying the price for her beliefs. Likewise, Jeremy Hammond is paying a price for his bringing the truth to us. Uh, it's remarkable what he exposed, a private, the private surveillance corporation, uh, one among many, uh, some 70% of the U.S. budget for surveillance is now spent giving that money to private corporations who spy on us. Stratford, the corporation that Jeremy Hammond revealed, uh, spying on activists from the people for the ethical treatment of, an of animals to the yes men to those trying to get Dow Chemical to finally settle and apologize for what happened in Bhopal, India. Uh, Jeremy Hammond has an incredible amount of support, hundreds of letters uh, asking for time served. Among them, in our letter from Daniel Ellsberg, of course, who revealed the Pentagon Papers. He said Jeremy Hammond's actions have to be seen in light of the profound consequences of private intelligence on political activists. Jeremy Hammond was an alleged source for WikiLeaks, which has posted significant number of the files from Strat Stratford. WikiLeaks, along with a dozen other newspapers, submitted a letter, a letter to the court pointing out the significance and the importance of the information revealed in the Stratford hack. The important, the imp an important point about that letter from WikiLeaks, as well as the other media, is that WikiLeaks and these papers did not and do not and will not abandon their sources. This is very much unlike uh, the New York Times, and I think even The Guardian, which after they get the material from their sources, um, does nothing, nothing to protect them. And in fact, in the case of WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, as well as Chelsea Manning, excoriates them on occasion. Uh, let's hope uh, that Jeremy Hammond gets time served. He is a hero, a hero for all of us. I want to end on this incredibly moving statement at the letter, at the end of the letter, uh, that Sarah Harrison wrote. And it's one that we should all take to heart. When whistleblowers come forward, we need to fight for them so others will be encouraged. When they are gagged, we must be their voice. When they are hunted, we must be their shield. When they are locked away, we must free them. Giving us the truth is not a crime. This is our, dot, our data, our information, our history. We must fight to own it. And then it signs Sarah Harrison uh, with this, the following, courage is contagious. So let's hope for Sarah Harrison, Jeremy Hammond, and others who have had the courage to reveal the truth. Michael Ratner, thank you so much for sharing that. Jessel Noor and Real News, thank you very much for having me again on The Real News. You can follow us at The Real News. You can tweet me questions at Jessel Noor. Thank you so much for being with us.